Hi YouTube, Charlie Black 20 back once again. I have the final movie trilogy, Free Willy 3, The Rescue. It was, in my opinion, the weakest of the trilogy. And it is actually the shortest movie of the trilogy. And we <clears throat> start the movie with some beautiful music, some soft music, and then it becomes ominous. And we see the silhouette of a boat above us in the ocean going by. And we see these things piercing the water that look like bullets. A lot of them. And we flash over to this, I guess, small fishing town, and we meet little 10-year-old Max. Uh... And he is riding his bike uh, around the, the uh, I guess, docks, fishing market. And uh, he heads home to his mom and he finds out that his dad isn't going to be back from his fishing trip for a little while. He's going to be out on the boat for a few more days. And his mom says, well, next time he comes and he, go and he goes back out, how would you like to go with him? And Max gets very excited about that. He's extremely happy about it. And um, his dad shows up that night, uh, I think, like a night or two later, and greets his wife and uh, finds his son packing up. And he's like, are you ready to learn the family business? Max is like, definitely. So he's going to spend some quality time with his dad. And we uh, also uh, get reintroduced to none other than Jesse. He gets to this boat, this dock, where this boat called the Noah is in port. And uh, he pays for a pizza that shows up and uh, for the boat. And uh, the crew uh, uh, are asking, who are you? Who, what are you doing here? Uh, the main scientist, uh, her name is Drew. We see Randolph is the one who re recommended uh, Jesse for the job as a assistant for them because they're going to be out doing research on the orca population. And Randolph is like, I've never met this kid before in my life. <laughs> as he's taking a slice of pizza. And uh, Jesse's like, I'll, I'll do whatever you say. And uh, Drew's like, we're going to get along just fine then. And um, we learned that they're going to study the orca population because apparently it's gone down by 10% in the last two years, and they want to find out why. And they're not sure what it is. They think it could be environmental. It could be uh, a disease. They're not sure. So they're going to go do research, and they're going to uh, tag one of the whales. Jesse sets up this uh, music, his uh, harmonica music, on the hydrophone through a recording that he's made. And uh, he, pitches it, he puts the pitch volume so high that us humans can't hear it, but obviously whales, because they hear it much higher capacity, at a much higher frequency than us, We'll be able to find them. That we'll hear that sound, and because Willie's familiar with it, he'll probably come running if he's within a thirty-mile radius. Is what Jesse says. And Drew's like, "How old are you again?" And he's like, "How old are you?" She's like, "That's a very personal question." <laughs> and um, we go back to Max and his dad, uh, John Wesley. I forgot to mention his name is John Wesley. His dad's name, and they are going out on the boat. And he meets the crew, uh, including, I think, the first mate, who says, What are you going to be when you up grow up, kid? And Max says, Your boss. And um, they uh, apparently find what they're looking for. Um, they hear uh, a bunch of uh, whales. And they get up. They take this thing that was uh, hidden on the boat. And they take it out and they put it on the bow of the boat. And it's a very, very big gun. It's like a cannon that has sights on it. And they put this very big harpoon on it with rope attached to it. And they have Max hold on to another harpoon for them to reload. And they are approaching this pod of orcas. And Wesley takes aim at one and shoots killing it. And um, Max 
doesn't know what to think at that moment, obviously. He's, I mean, he's a 10-year-old kid who's seeing his dad do what his dad says is his job, which is, he says, fishing. And, um, <clears throat> the, um, they reload the harpoon uh, gun, and he, uh, his dad also says, give me the spear gun. And we see a much smaller gun, like you would use for spear fishing. And, uh... He uses it to mark another orca that he wants to get. And we see the orca he's aiming the spear gun at. And, of course, it has the big flopped over dorsal fin. It's Willie. And Wesley shoots him with the spear gun and hits him in the tail. And it goes through his tail. It, half of it goes through his tail. And Willie lets out a screech. And uh, as they get the gun reloaded, uh, they see Willie. And he's coming straight at their boat straight at them and it's like they've never seen that before i think and so at the last second uh the captain says hard starboard so they turn the ship really fast but they do it just a little too fast and max goes over the rail into the water and they yell man overboard and uh max kind of sinks at first and he sees this gigantic creature less than three feet away from him that has just been shot with a spear gun. And Willie looks at him, locks eyes, like this, and then just lets him go. Doesn't do anything, just kind of swims away a little. And uh, the dad uh, and the crew uh, pull Max out of the water, and his dad says, You scared the crap out of me. Let's get you below and get some clothes on, and get some dry clothes. And uh, Max heads down, and then he turns to his crew and he says, Take care of the fish we already got. And um, so Max, get, they get him into some dry clothes and uh, get him get him warmed up. And um, they start talking to Max, the crew, about how he uh, had his first good day and he'll get a share of the of the uh, the credit. And the the first mate gives. Max a necklace that has a sperm tooth, a sperm whale's tooth on it, and he says, "We got that a while back. It's yours now." And um, it's obvious Max is kind of, kind of conflicted. He's not sure what to think, because I don't think he really he he's not sure. And um, he goes on on the deck, and he starts. Uh, Using the, uh, there's this tire that's attached to a rope around on the side of the, the boat, and he's swinging it. He's putting his foot through the rope and swinging it against the, the ship, making it squeak through the water because of the water. And he hears Willie making those, uh, the song, uh, doing his voice, making it sound like a song. And, uh, he accidentally drops the tooth necklace into the tire. So what he does is he, crosses his leg on the metal pole of the railing and he goes back to get the necklace. He manages to grab hold of it and at that moment Willie's head pops up right below him and he screams and gets back on board. And he looks down at Willie like, what the heck? Like that. And uh, he tells him, go, go away, they'll hear you. Go away, go, go. And Willie's not listening to him obviously so what Max does is he grabs a ball, one of those rubber balls, and I think it's like a buoy, and throws it at Willie, hitting him in the head. Turns around when Willie seems to leave, and then the ball comes flying back and hits Max in the back of the head. <laughs> and um, Max is about to throw it again, but his dad comes up on board and says, Did you hear that? And Max is like, What? Hear what? And he's like, They make this sound when they surface. <sighs> out of their blowhole. You also get a sense of it when they're nearby. Go get my spear gun. And uh, Max uh, does what he says. And uh, he's holding the gun. And um, uh, he says, I see him, Max. Give me the gun. And Max uh, runs a little too quickly towards him. And he trips, cuts up his shin a bit, and drops the spear gun. And his dad grabs it. And he fires it, but he doesn't hit anything. Uh, Willie disappears, even though they've got the searchlights on and everything. Willie disappears, and uh, when his dad sees he's hurt, he takes him below, uh, gets some uh, alcohol or hydrogen peroxide, and also puts a bandage on it, 
and um, basically says, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about this work. I'm going to teach you everything I know. Um, this knife that I have here, this was handed down to me from my father who got it from his father. And someday, when you're ready, it will be yours. And so there's a family history there. The next morning, while Jesse is sleeping, guess who shows up at the boat but Willie? And he uh, is following the, the, the harmonica on the hydrophone, and he accidentally bumps the boat a little. So he wakes up Jesse. Jesse comes flying out, and he finds Willie. But Willie's acting really strange. He's obviously in a lot of distress, and he's just, like, swimming all around. So him and Randolph, they know something's wrong. So they get up. They get in the Zodiac boat. Yeah, Zodiac boat, and they try to figure out what's going on. And Randall says, I see a spear in his tail from a spear gun. And um, we cut back to the Botany Bay with Max, and he's gone below deck to where um, we see the first mate working on uh, welding more uh, spears, harpoons, things like that, and sharpening more knives. And Max says, what are you doing here at this spot and he says that's where we process the meat we cut it up and then we uh, package it and we put it in this freezer for shipping and um we it, there's a big uh market underground market for this in norway japan sweden and max is like underground you mean illegal and uh the first mate's like it's two hundred dollars a pound kid so then we see uh, his dad again, who says, Today I'm going to teach you how to use the harpoon gun. And we don't see the training, we just know that he's being shown how it works. And we go back to Jesse now, who he and he, Randolph and Drew, are on the, on the, uh, the uh, Zodiac boat. Uh, and Jesse's gone underwater to, with a pair of what looks to be pliers or cutters, and he cuts the spear... Uh, basically in half, yeah, the bottom part, he pulls it out, brings it up to the surface, gives it to Randolph, and um, they've got a couple machines on the raft for uh, research purposes, and uh, Willie starts swimming away before Jesse can say anything else, and he sees another orca waiting for Willie, and uh, he asks, who's that whale waiting with Willie? And Randolph's like, that's Nikki, and uh, <laughs> Uh, Jesse says, is it a boy Nikki or a girl Nikki? And Randall says, he's a girl. And um, they're trying to get Willie to come back and bring Nikki with him, but um, they're not listening. They've got better things to do, as Drew says. And um, Randolph figures out a way because he says that Nikki and him are old friends because he once dropped his lunch in the, in the water by mistake and Nikki ate it. So he's throwing these oranges out, and we get this really quick thing where Nikki comes for the oranges, and one by one, just sucks them down. Um, 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 just like that. And he um, has a fourth orange that he's holding in his hand, like this, at the side of the raft, and Nikki starts bumping the raft. Uh, uh, and and uh, says so she likes to play with her food, and uh, she opens her mouth, she gets the last orange. Uh, Willie actually gets one from Jesse. And they put these sensors on Nikki's head. And they get these heartbeats. Notice how I said they get these heartbeats. And Jesse says, e and uh, Dr Randolph says, either Nikki's got two hearts, and Drew says, or she's going to have a baby. And uh, Jesse's like, all right, Willie. And at the same time as he's doing that, he puts one of those suction cup track trackers on Willie underneath his dorsal fin, uh, where the curve is. So it's inside there, that little space. And he says, now I know where to find you, always. And at the same time, the Botany Bay's radio guy says, I've been getting this weird thing, this, this weird noise on the, on the radio, and I can't figure it out. But let, let me take it down a couple hundred octaves. And he does that, and he hears... And it's just the same thing over and over again, really high pitch. And he says, it's a loop. It's not an animal. Somebody's just playing it over and over again. And then we uh, see how Max's first time on the harpoon gun goes. And that's where 
we see them going after Willie and his pot again. And um, his dad is helping Max learn the harpoon gun. And he's telling him all these instructions and be ready, aim for where the target's going to be, not where it's at. And he says, wait, wait. But Max, whether he does it on purpose or by mistake, he pulls the trigger too soon and he misses Willie. Thank God. And uh, his dad's like, bring me the another harpoon. And his uh, first mate goes to get it and Max goes to get one. And then Max, I know this is intentional, he starts getting his foot tangled in the rope that's, holy, that's on the harpoon, and the first mate has to untangle him, and his dad says, drop the harpoon now. And that's exactly what Max does. The first mate scrambles, it, scrambles, puts it in the gun, and they're getting ready to shoot again. But Max looks behind them, and he yells to his dad, Dad, a ship! And, it turn, and it's the Noah. And uh, obviously what they're doing is illegal. And so uh, they... Uh, they they do this, where they um, turn the boat away so they can't be seen. They take the harpoon gun off. They hide it again. They hide all the har harpoons and spear guns. And um, Je Jesse is watching things, along with Randolph. And he, they see Willie smacking his tail at the boat, splashing water at the at a Botany Bay. And Jesse's saying, that's them. That's got to be the whalers. It's got to be. There's no other reason Willie would do that. But obviously the, the Noah's captain and his first mate are like, yeah, we're going to tell the Coast Guard that a whale told us there are whalers out here. We can hear the laughter without the radio in that case. And he says, Jesse says, well, what would it take? And he says, proof. You bring me proof, I'll gladly call the Coast Guard. And um, they have to go into port to take care of some things. I think they need to get supplies. Now, uh, Wesley, the captain of the Botany Bay, says, uh, has figured out um, that the loop that's playing on the radio is coming from the Noah boat, the Noah, and that that's where the they the whales where they've just shown up. That's where that ship showed up. So there's connection there. And he says, "Can you make it so that we can play that sound ourselves?" And uh, the radio man says, "Oh yeah, I can do that, but we need to go into port for parts." And that's exactly what they do, because they plan to bring the whales to them with the recording. And that's a, that's scary. So they head back to port. Max goes back to his uh, home with his mom, obviously. Um, but he also, when the, Jesse spies from the, from his ship that Max has thrown his necklace into this really shallow water with rocks and weeds. And so Jesse uh, takes a stick and uh, manages to find it and take it. And he follows Max to the Botany Bay boat and pretends that he wants to uh, get hired on his crew. Um, and uh, it doesn't really work. Uh, he becomes Max's friend at that moment. He also says his name is Randolph instead of Jesse. But um, Max and uh, Jesse leave. Max goes to the library and starts looking at these books of orcas, and Jesse is talking to him, saying, um, I know your dad's a whaler. It's wrong what he's doing. And um, uh, Max, he just had a conversation with his dad the night before, and his dad had talked about how whaling used to be a grand thing. Whalers used to have a real purpose. They used to light the world because the oil from the whales was the biggest purpose that they had. They could light the world. And now, all they do is hunt for the meat and give sushi to the Japanese. So Wesley, the captain, uh, I'll get back to him in a bit, I guess. I'm going to get back to his state of mind, his philosophy in a bit at the end. But he, Max is really conflicted because this is his father, but he's also seeing his father do something that is He's not sure if it's right or wrong. All he knows is that it's illegal, but it's his dad. And his dad takes great pride in it, and that uh, his dad loves him. So it, there's a lot of confliction right there. And so Jesse is trying to reach out to Max, and uh, he basically tells uh, him that I'm actually the opposite of a whaler. I don't hunt whales. I actually am friends with them. I try to protect them. And I could introduce you to them right now. And that's exactly what they go do. Um, 
they get on life vests, they take the uh, uh, speed, the, the Zodiac out and uh, into open water using the tracker on Willie. And um, <laughs> Willie starts uh, pushing around the, uh, the raft with his nose and Jesse jumps in. And Max follows, and they just start playing with Willie, where he just pulls them up by the by the snout up to the top of the water, letting them ride him basically. And um, uh, he does that with both Jesse and Max. And uh, Jesse tells Max after the after the playtime is over that uh, I've only ever seen him attach himself to somebody like that just once, and we know who he's referring to. He only uh, gets that way with family. And Max says, "I'm not his family," and. Uh, <laughs> Jesse says, try telling him that. And so, Max takes uh, Jesse to visit his home. Uh, his mom isn't there. His mom works at the cafe, apparently, as a waitress. And, um, Jesse sees the pictures of the family, but he comes to the conclusion, Jesse does, he says, I can't use you to get to your dad. I I'll get the proof myself. Even if it isn't right what your dad is doing, he's still your dad. So, good luck, Max. So, Jesse leaves, and he leaves a note on the Noah with Randolph, for Randolph, along with a walkie-talkie and an earpiece, a hearing earpiece. And when Randolph finds it, he uses it to radio to Jesse, like, what are you doing? Where are you? And Jesse has, of course, snuck onto the Botany Bay, to get proof. He's looking for spear guns and the spears that were used against Willie. But he has to avoid the crew while he's doing this because even though some of the crew is on uh, is in town at the bar, the um, radio man is still working on it. He's still putting things together. And um, the um, Max is uh, at the same time talking with his mother. While she's trying to put him to bed, he's like, Mom, sh should you do the right thing all the time? And she's like, yes, you should. Even if it hurts? Even if it hurts. Especially when it hurts, maybe. And he says, what about Dad? Isn't what he's doing wrong? And she says, what your dad does is put a roof over our heads and food on our table. And... That's all that matters. And she says, but wouldn't Dad go to jail? And she's like, no, no. They would take his boat and make him pay a fine, maybe, but he wouldn't go to jail. And then he says to her, Max tells her, why don't you talk to him? He'll listen to you. And she says, I will support your father no matter what. Basically shutting it down right then and there. And Max is getting really frustrated at that point. And he's just like tossing and turning at that in his bed. He's... His mom understands where he's coming from, but she's just saying no to him, basically. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, do the right thing, even if it hurts, but I won't do it with your dad, which I'll get into that at the end as well. But um, Randolph uh, heads to the bar along with the crew, minus Jesse, of course, and Jesse goes looking, and he manages to find what he's looking for. But at the same time, the um, radio man tells... Uh, sends a message to uh, Wesley and the other crew members that he's finished uh, getting everything ready. They can they can go now. And so the captain and his crew are going to head back. But uh, Randolph decides to try to stall them by pretending to be a drunk guy and uh, grabbing a hold of Wesley like, Hey, it's me. It's Randolph. You remember me from the old days? Don't you remember? He's pretending to be drunk. And, um, Wesley's like, <laughs> uh, no worries, my friend, no worries. We'll, we'll catch up next time. And then Randolph completely switches and says, I don't think you understand. I'm not your friend, and I know what you've been doing. And then he punches Wesley, and he, but at that moment, uh, Randolph is completely outnumbered, so is Drew, and uh, the, the locals, or natives, are on Wesley's side at this point, and they're ready to, to, to throw punches. But... The cat, Wesley gets up, grabs Randolph, turns around and says, You're making a mistake. I suggest you get back on your boat and leave. And so the crew leaves and they get back on the Botany Bay. 
At the same time, Max has snuck out of the house and gone back to that boat. And he finds Jesse as the crew is leaving. The, the ship is leaving. And he, um, Jesse's been doing a little hide-and-seek from the crew at this moment, and he lost the spear. So he doesn't have his proof, but he's also stuck on the boat as it's leaving. So Max picks it up and gives it to Jesse and says, Here you go. Here's your proof. And Jesse jumps off the boat and basically swims to shore. And Max goes in, uh, to the, his dad's cabin to wait for him. And Jesse shows the proof to the captain of the Noah, who he and the first mate are drinking now. And the first mate's, and they're like, yeah, we'll call it first thing in the morning. And uh, Jesse's like, wait, shouldn't we go and try to stop them? We need to do more than that. And the captain's like, I'm not risking $2 million worth of uh, equipment for, $2 million worth of equipment to do the Coast Guard's job. So Randolph and uh, Jesse head back to the boat. And uh, Jesse's like, I haven't, I, I have a thought. And Randolph's like, 10 years. 10 years in jails. That's what uh, borrowing another person's boat without permission would get you. It's called piracy. And Jesse's like, I know, bad idea. And Randolph's like, let's do it. And so they go looking for the keys, to the, the spare keys to the boat. And Drew shows up and says, uh, why are you doing this? And uh, you could get fired. You could go to jail. And Randolph's like, I can live with that. It's the right thing to do. And uh, Drew says, what if I were to order you to drive this boat? And she has the keys in her hand. And Randall says, you'll lose your job. And he's like, she's like, well, I could live with that. And so they do do exactly that. <laughs> and, um, when they uh, head out, Max is found by his dad, of course. And his dad is not very happy with Max at the moment. But there's nothing he can do if he wants to go on this hunt. And, his, and, and, and Max is trying to talk to his dad. He's trying to talk his dad out of what he's doing. He's trying to say that, well, Dad, don't you think that what you're doing is wrong? It, 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 this isn't right? Isn't it dangerous to do this because you could get caught? And his dad isn't really hearing him, basically. He just says, God put these animals here for us to, to hunt. God did that. He gave them to us to hunt. And uh, Max says, but what about their feelings? What about uh, if they're like us, if they're like humans? And his dad says, they don't feel. They're just fish. And then Max says, you're wrong. And the first mate looks up at that. And I forgot to mention, Jesse had stuffed a sweatshirt of some kind into part of the engine room to um, cause it to, to become faulty. But he'd also accidentally... Uh, dropped the neck, uh, gotten the necklace, the, the sperm tooth whale's necklace caught on something as he was leaving the engine room. So it's sitting, it was sitting there, and the first mate found both. And so he thinks it was Max that did that, that sabotaged the engine. But um, when Max says, You're wrong to his dad, his dad turns to him pretty angry and says, Oh, I'm wrong. Which means your fa my father was wrong and my grandfather was wrong. We're all wrong and you're right. You don't feel bad when you eat a cheeseburger, do you? And then the, f and the first mate comes over and he says, Captain, I think you ought to know I found this in the engine room. And uh, obviously they think Max did it. And so his dad puts him in the cabin, kind of grounding him, locking the door. So the next morning it's really foggy. You can't see anything, or very, very little. But the Noah has been following the Botany Bay because Jesse put another one of those trackers on it. So they're able to follow it, but they're now using the recording that Jesse made to bring the, sh the orcas to their ship. Easy pickings in their mind. And so they get the harpoon gun ready and the spear guns. But uh, the Noah sends out a call to them saying, if you harm these whales, um, you will be fired upon. Fired upon with what? We don't have anything. And Randolph just hands Drew the uh, flare gun. And um, before she can fire it, um, the Botany Bay does a big circle because Max got out. He used uh, his grandfather's knife to do this, to twist the... Um, 
uh, the window lock, and he got out, got his life vest, and uh, told his dad, hey dad, and when his dad turns around and sees him, Max jumps into the water. And he tries to get his dad to tell, to say he's wrong, but he won't do it. He won't say he's wrong, and he throws him the life raft and tells him, grab it now, which Max does. He's bought some time, but he is forced down below, and they get back to the harpoon gun, and then Drew takes the flare gun and fires it over the Botany Bay, and uh, Wesley, when he sees that, he tells them to get the spear guns ready. So he's obviously... Uh, ready to fight, and then before they can fire their harpoon gun at Willie, the Noah, Jesse sends out an, a mayday mayday saying there's been a collision, and they ram into the back of the Botany Bay with the Noah, and it just boom, damages the ship, and it uh, uh, forces Wesley to pull the trigger, he misses everything, and then uh, Wesley gets hit by this net that's swinging around on uh, one of the masts. Hits him into the water where Willie sees him. And he's approaches him and kind of just tosses him around a little bit like that. While Wesley tries to avoid him by jumping around, in the, by moving around in the water as deftly as he can. Then he Wesley pulls out another knife and he tries to fight Willie with it, but he... Willie hits him with his tail, kind of, and it sends the knife down to the bottom. And uh, Wesley gets pushed up by Willie's snout on the end of it, like this. And he pushes him up to the to the surface. And Willie's looks like he's going to eat him, like bite him. And uh, Wesley's like, shoot him now, shoot him! And Jesse's like, no, don't, Willie, stop! And Max has come up from the, from the uh, hold wearing a really big jacket, and he's yelling at Willie to stop, and he does this along the side of the, the rail where there's water, and he makes that squeaking sound, really, really high-pitched squeaking sound. And Willie looks at him. Max does it again, and then Willie seems to swim away, leave him alone. But we hear this creaking, this loud creaking of breaking wood. And one of the masts, with a rope twirled around it, breaks. And there's the big net lands on top of Wesley and takes him underwater. He's all tangled in it. And then he's sinking. He's struggling. He can't get out. It looks like he's going to drown. Willie brings him to the surface. And uh, Randolph and Jesse get in the, have gotten into the Zodiac and grab Wesley and pull him out. And the Coast Guards also arrive, so they see everything. And Max is looking at his dad, and his dad's looking back at him like he couldn't—he can't believe what just happened. And um, we see them have a good long talk about, um, Max, you were right. And uh, Max says, yeah, a cheeseburger saved your life. <laughs> and uh, he's, he gives his dad a hug, and then his dad says, what am I supposed to do now? I'm a whaler. It's who I am. It's what I am. And Max says, no, that's not what you are to me. You're my dad. He gives him another hug. And then we flash cut to, I'm thinking, a few months ahead. Max is with the Noah on that raft again, that Zodiac raft with Drew, Randolph, and Jesse. And both Jesse and Randolph are in these scuba suits and have scuba tanks. And they go into the water with these big cameras where they are filming... Willie and Nikki, and Nikki is giving birth to her baby. And um, actually, in this moment, I realize where that footage comes from. It's not from Wild Orcas. This footage of the baby's birth is actually Baby Shamu, the very first Baby Shamu to give birth in captivity, to, have, to be born in captivity. You can go online and find that. It's the exact same thing, and it's, it is pretty cool to see. But I'm glad I recognize it nowadays. And they come up, and they kind of celebrate a little bit. And um, they say, what should his name be? What should we name him? And uh, Max says, we should name him after his dad. But Jesse says, no, I think we should name him Max. So it's a little ambivalent what the baby's name is going to be. And then we see them swimming off into the sunset. Like in the other original movies, we see the same kind of scene. 
Now, that's how the third movie ends. But the thing that really struck me watching it this time instead of as a younger kid is that there is a philosoph there's some philosophies in here that or some ide uh, philosophy and morals going on here where John Wesley is a whaler he know his family's been doing this for generations and they used to whalers used to be a honorable profession to a certain degree that they lit up the world with the oil from whales that there was a purpose and now all they're doing is underground work where they are selling black market whale meat and if they get caught they get in trouble that they are would be looked down upon as common criminals and he says that God gave us these creatures to hunt they're not feeling they're just fish how I f and and the mother says this is how your dad f get, keeps a roof over our heads and that now that I watch it again that mother really pissed me off because she's saying the right things to her kid but the minute it applies to her family and her comfort she's like don't care don't care at all now it could be because she doesn't see the orcas in the way that we as the audience do in this case that a man and and Wesley says this himself he says a man has a right to make a living and there is some logic to that in his ide and his ideology that he showed in the beginning about how the profession was so honorable at, or at least um, had a, a, a greater purpose and but then you see his other ideology which seems to be more in line with his wife in that sense is that these are just unthinking fish they're not similar to humans they don't have emotions and this is God's will which those two conflicting ideologies in the same mind to me is quite fascinating and there is a moral debate about that in my mind that he's doing this so he can feed his family now obviously it's illegal and he's not making huge amounts of money because he his house is a little run down his ship is a little uh, old but it's still living so is he doing it because of tradition or is he doing it because he's trying to make a living a and the combination is both but it hardens itself when he's being told that these thing these orcas these whales do have feelings that they aren't these unthinking fish and it takes his son confronting him or even not just his son confronting him but him actually being saved by a quote-unquote fish and especially when he knows he's shot already and that was threatening to basically chew him to pieces and then just listening to this just his son stopping it weird and then being saved by them so the one who pissed me off the most was the wife because she was basically being a complete hypocrite saying she knows that her husband is doing something illegal at the very least and possibly very wrong you could make it you maybe you can have a philosophical debate about orcas aren't the same as humans therefore it's okay for us to hunt them or that whaling has gone on for centuries and therefore it's not in immoral thing it's just the way things have been you could make that argument I guess it's a it's a philosophical debate to that degree it's just that we as humans have evolved to the point and we our technology and our research has evolved to the point where we don't need whales to make oil or to use lamps with oil like that we have other things so it's uh and, and at the same time he's making money to put food on his table but the way he's doing it is illegal and unless his uh, unless you believe unless you the only way he can seem to justify it is by saying no they're just fish they don't feel that's how he justifies what he does I found that quite fascinating after I watched it for, for a refresher but 
Max go Max had an evolution in this too, because all he wanted to do was learn his dad's work, see what his dad did, and help him as much as he could. But then when he saw what his dad was doing by killing these, I guess, majestic creatures to Max at that point, he wasn't sure how, what to think. I mean, remember, this is a 10-year-old kid who's coming to see what his dad does for work and help him, and he's seeing these animals get shot with these huge spears, and then when one of them has a chance to kill him, it doesn't do that, and in fact becomes friends with him. So he's living through this conflict in his mind, like, how do I help my dad without hurting him or us? And in the end, Max makes a choice that, no, it doesn't matter if it hurts, I have to do what I feel is right. And that's telling his dad that he's wrong and doing what he can to stop him. And I think we're lucky that, or at least Max is, that his dad obviously loves his son more than he loves his work or his belief that these are unthinking creatures. So obviously his dad uh, forgave Max and he actually said, I'm sorry, Max, you were right. I was wrong. And Max says, you made a mistake. That's all. Because his dad had said, you make mistakes and you move forward. So, that's Free Willy 3, The Rescue. And, uh, as I said, of the three movies, I think it is the, uh, the weakest of the trilogies. There was another movie, Free Willy, Escape from Pirate's Cove. Don't even, in my opinion, don't even watch it. It's not worth it. It's basically a repeat of the original movie in South Africa with a little girl and a baby orca that gets washed in to a cove uh, by a giant storm and he gets separated, blah, blah. But it's a really not very good, not very good, in my opinion. So, thank you for listening, and I wish you all a good night. Charlie Black 20, out.